Hey guys, it's Christopher. Welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, in this video, I'm going to explain how to make a bridge. More exactly, more generally, how to allow the hero to go from a layer to another layer um, without using the stairs entity. Um, we used the stairs entity to implement platforms inside dungeons. But um, this is a more general case. The stairs entity have, um, give a sp very specific behavior. They make um, an animation and a sound and a special movement for the hero when he climbs the stairs. But here we just want to uh, s smoothly go from a layer to another layer. Uh, so, this map uses two layers. Oops, <laughs> not this one. Uh, initial game, bridge. I forgot that. Okay, so I'm under the bridge. You should know how to do that for now. And we want to put a ladder here, allowing to climb and uh, to arrive on the highest, on the higher layer. So my map uses two layers, layer zero for this, okay, and layer one for the higher part of the map, with jumpers to to jump to the lower layer, jump of the cliff. So the ladder tiles are here. Let's try to make a ladder. And it will be a bit more tricky that you could think. So first my ladder tiles are here. Okay. Um, and this style is on the higher layer already. So we need to do like this and like this. And also split the jumper in two parts. So these are only tiles. Okay, this one has the ground type ladder. But it won't change the layer or anything. It just means that the hero will walk slower on, on the tile. Okay, so he walks slower, but nothing special happens. I'm staying on the low layer. Just like if this green part here was a platform. So, of course, this is not what we want. Um, so, how to do? The trick is to use two sensors, one that will be placed on the low layer, for example here, and a second one that will be placed on the high layer, but here. So one of them, this one will make the hero go up one layer, and this one will make the hero go down one layer. So don't put them at the same coordinates because uh, it would result in uh, like an infinite loop. The hero would uh, continuously go from one to the other layer. And put the one... Uh, this one is on the high layer, okay, and this one on the low layer. Yes. The one on the low layer will be called layer up sensor okay. and the other one layer down sensor. Okay, so it will work because when we are here, we are on the low layer. We won't touch this one because we are not on the same layer than this one. And as soon as we get exactly on this one, boom, we go up one layer. But we're not overlapping this one, so it will work. We will be able to continue here. OK, 
okay and if we go um, the other way on the contrary we will only touch this one and arrive on the low layer so this is the current configuration you want or maybe like this it should also work um, but there is a very small little detail it's that as soon as you get to the higher layer you immediately fall because let's disable the displaying of the low layer you will fall because there is absolutely no tile here and when it when it's empty the engine would just make the hero fall on the next layer um, but first let's make the script to allow our layers to do something function layer up sensor on activated um, by the way you could probably use teletransporters instead of sensors with scripts but if you use a teletransporter um, there are some situations when the teletransporter won't be activated it will be ignored for example if the hero is jumping uh, f maybe you have an, uh, an item in your quest that makes the hero jump uh, this is the case in my games, in some of my games, the, the rock feather. But even without that, uh, sometimes when you are hurt by an enemy, he will make you uh, jump. Or when you use the pe Pegasus boots and uh, bounce against a wall, you jump a little also, a little bit. So you are not 100% sure that teletransporters are activated. So that's why I'm, I'm using sensor. But um, otherwise, you could very well use teletransporter if if there was not uh, the problem I just mentioned, because you would just put immediate transition and no sound and no sprite. But it's very easy to write the script. Just get the position of the hero. Um, so coordinates and layer hero get position and then hero set position you don't ch you don't change the coordinates but you change the layer so um, in the next version yeah, there will be a function get layer and a function set layer because in this case we don't really need uh, x and y here but um, this is just a little detail and minus one for the other le uh, the other sensor. Okay, so let's see uh, our little problem. You should hear the sound. I mean, okay, we just heard a, a sound of Link, of the hero falling, because this layer was activated. The hero ended up on the high layer and then immediately fell back on the low layer because there is no again there is no tile here so how to fix this problem easy why don't we put the um, ladder tiles on the high layer well it's not really better because it works when we are on the high layer, but not so much when we are on the low layer. So the ladder should really stay on the lowest layer. Um, one, the trick we can use is to make an invisible platform. I mean, when this is activated, um, if you if we don't want the hero to fall. Oops. Let's just put a tile. Uh, let's say a tile like this. Oops. Sorry.
and he won't fall. But we just have to make the tide invisible. But still active. Um, we actually have some invisible, uh, some tile patterns for invisible tiles in the tile set. They are currently here, 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 and here, depending on the ground you need. So um, this one is to make a in, uh, traversable invisible tile, but in this case we don't exactly want a traversable one, but a ladder one to still make the hero walk slower. So it's a bit tricky, but we do have invisible ladders here. Um, don't worry, this is just the first solution of the problem, but because we will see that it's very painful actually to use uh, invisible tiles because precisely they are invisible, okay? So as soon as you unselect them, you don't see, no longer see them. So it's very easy to go wrong. But just to show you, layer 1. Now it should work. Okay. So, it works except that when I am on the high layer, I can go this way or this way, which is wrong, and even uh, until here. And now I'm stuck in the wall because I fell on the next layer. Um, so again, this is because I forgot some tiles. I put this one here, but no walls here or here. So let's just put an invisible wall. So this one wall, okay. This one. And okay, I put that on the wrong layer. Where is it? Okay, that's exactly why you shouldn't... Okay, it's here. <coughs> That's exactly why this is not such a great solution. I don't see my tiles, but okay, there are all three of them here. Layer one, at least this is correct. Okay, so this time it works. Again, when you touch this sensor here, you get to this layer, and since you are on on this ladder tile, despite the fact that it's, it's invisible, it's, it's still active and these ones also work to make the hero, um, to block the hero, prevent him from going to the side. Okay, so what is the better solution then? Actually, we do want invisible ties, <laughs> but ideally, we still want to see them in the quest editor here. Not during the game, but in the quest editor. So, how can you make such a trick? Let's make them visible in the quest editor, so as a copy of this ladder, but um, on the high layer and then convert them to dynamic tiles. And as soon as they are converted to dynamic tiles, you can uh, manage them from the script. So we'll just make a script to hide them. This one will be called invisible tile one. Oops. They will be enabled, but invisible. Okay, now they are called. Their name is displayed here on the status bar when I pass the mouse over them. Invisible, invisible tile 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so we just want to update our script so that invisible tile 1 set visible false. And same thing for 2 and 3. Okay, it works. No problem. And this time, uh, these guys are really are visible in the quest editor, so that's much better. Okay. 
I just press B to bring them to back so just so that I can see this sensor. So again this should be your low layer and this should be your high layer. We do have ladder ties on both, du duplicated but um, the one of the high layer are made invisible here. So instead of repeating repeating the code here, what's what would be better is to make a loop and to get all entities of the map starting with the name with the prefix invisible tile do tile set visible false. So this is much uh, more powerful because it will work even if you have several ladders in the same map which is exactly what we will do now copy paste let's put a ladder here for example so again we want we need to update these um, oops I also need to update that Okay. <coughs> um, so this code will work also for the second ladder, but not this code. The sensor here is called is now called layer down sensor two, and the other one lay layer down sensor layer up sensor two. So let's do the same kind of thing, but um, to actually add some add these events on our uh, sensors. So it will look like some. It will look like this for sensor in. So get all entities starting with prefix layer up sensor. So this will catch layer up sensor and layer up sensor underscore two. <coughs> Sorry. So we could do that. Define the function like this inside the loop, um, and it would work. But I, it's not very clean to define several times exactly the same function it will duplicate uh, the, the I mean it's just a detail but in in, mem in the memory you will have several functions with, e with exactly the same code every sensor will will have its own uh, activated its own copy of the of this code So it's possible to do a bit better by just assigning the a value of type function to the unactivated field. And let's just rename this. To take a parameter and actually it's now local variable. So this is a local variable to the file called sensor unactivated and it's a local variable of type function okay it takes as a parameter the sensor um, when we were using the uh, column syntax here it meant the same as actually this so you should know this kind of things now. Now that you are a Lua expert, okay. <laughs> so this is a, a regular variable of type function, and we assign it to uh, the unactivated field of all sensors, which means that all sensors will point to the same code. Okay, and let's do the same. Uh, by the way, no. 
layer up sensor on activating this will be more a more accurate name okay because don't want any confusion with the other version minus one layer down sensor layer down sensor okay so this was a bit more advanced but it should really sol solve all our problems very and it's very clean once you have that you no longer have to touch the, the script you can add and remove ladders to the map just by copy pasting them from the editor Okay, good. So, um, if if it's a bit difficult to understand this, uh, that's completely normal. It's quite advanced stuff already. Um, but um, yeah, the last thing I wanted to say is that so this is very generic code. It will work on all bridges of this map. But we we will see later how to do even better using meta tables. Using what's called meta tables, it will be possible to do this script only once for the whole game, for the whole quest and it will apply to all maps uh, yeah to all entities starting with this name and to all entities starting with this name and this name in the whole game but uh, we'll see that later for now it's already very nice to if you are able to to do this kind of stuff okay uh, i hope it it was understandable I know it's a bit compli it's a mm, bit more complicated than the basics tutorial but uh, this is the first one of the intermediate playlist uh, so yeah um, feel free to ask if you have any question I'll, I'll be happy to help thank you all for watching guys see you next time bye